Hello scholars, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at the distributive law. The distributive law states that when you are given an expression or an equation which involves brackets, the number or the letter, so whether it's a number, a variable, or a combination, the, the, the term that is immediately in front of the bracket is distributed among the terms inside the bracket, each term inside the bracket. So, we're, so the negative 3 is in front of the bracket here, we're going to distribute it with the x and with the 6. So sometimes we put arrows to show that we're distributing it, right? So the instruction normally then is expand and simplify. Whenever you see expand and simplify. To expand, we mean we are distributing this term, expanding it with each term in the bracket. And then we're going to simplify the expression, meaning we're now going to combine the like terms, if there are like terms, once it's possible, we're going to combine the like terms and make the expression a simpler form of itself, right? So, I'm not going to put the brackets, um, the, the arrows, sorry. I might do, let me do it for the first couple ones and then we're just going to work it in our heads, we're just going to understand what we're doing, that we're expanding it. So, it's negative 3 times x and negative 3 times 6. The negative 3 is working, this bracket here, this bracket means multiply. So it's negative 3 times the x, negative 3 times the 6. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x, negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. And since this is an x term and a constant term. We can't add them. We can't subtract them. So this is actually in its simplest form as is. So we expanded it and we can't simplify it any further. So that's our final answer. So 4 times y, 4 times negative 2. Remember, the sign goes with the number that, that follows it. So it's not 4 times 2, it's 4 times negative 2. And it's negative 3 times positive 6. So 4 times y, that's 4y. Four, 4 times negative 2, negative 8. And we can't combine these, we can't simplify this anymore. Negative 8x times x, remember we're multiplying the x's, x times x is x squared squared, so negative 8x times x is negative 8x squared, negative 8x times 5 is negative 40x, right, negative 8x times positive 5, negative 40x, a half, negative a half times x, so this is the last foiling that I'm doing with the arrow, right? So the distributive law when we're expanding is also called, called foiling. Negative a half times x is negative half x. Negative a half times positive y again is negative a half. Y, negative a half times negative 4, now the two negatives multiplying will give a positive. Half of 4 is 2. So it's negative half x minus half y plus 2. Those are all unlike terms. They are all different terms. This is an x term, a y term, a constant term. We can't combine them any further. We can't simplify them any further. This is where we stop. This is the final answer. All right, so we have 1 third x times 9x. 1 third of 9, 3 into 9 goes 3 times, and x times x, that's x squared. 1 third of 15 is 5, and the x, right? So the, the x is multiplied here to give x squared. 
the 15 doesn't have an x, so we find one third of 15, which is 5, and we have to put back this one x there. So 3x squared plus 5x cannot be simplified any further. We have an x squared term and an x term, two different powers, two different degree, degrees, so we cannot combine them. This is our final answer. This is as simple as we can make it. Two-fifths of 20. Five goes into 20. Four times two fours are eight. So that's eight x. Two-fifths times negative five. Five into itself ones, two ones, two. That's negative two. So it's eight x minus two. Now we have a y squared multiplied by a y cubed. Remember, in laws of indices, if we're multiplying and the bases are the same, we add the indices, we add the powers. So here, we're multiplying the y squared times the y cubed, so that we give y to the fifth. We add the two and the three, right? And right by the six, because this has a coefficient of one, 1 times 6 is 6. Again, we just have 3 times a 1, that's 3 is positive. They're all positive. y squared times 1, y to the first power. y to the first power. We add the 2 and the 1, so that's y to the third power. And we cannot add y to the fifth power and y to the third power. Right? So we have, this is as simple as it gets. That's as simple as it gets. Now, negative 6 times 8, that's negative 48. And the x, negative 6 times 9, that's negative 54. Plus 3x, this is out here by itself. It's not affected by the negative 6 because there's this plus sign separating it. Only these in the brackets are affected by the negative 6 outside the brackets, right? So we can combine, however, the negative 48x and the 3x, negative 48x plus the 3x, so that's negative 45x minus 54. And that would be our final answer. So we have simplified, right? We expanded the brackets, and then we grouped the like terms. Now, we have negative 5x plus 6x, brackets 2x plus 9. These in the brackets here are not affected by the negative 5x out here. Only by the 6x. This is in immediately in front of the bracket. They are only affected by the 6x. So we're going to write back the negative 5x, 6x times 2x, that gives 12x squared, 6x times 9, that gives 54x. So we can combine the negative 5x plus the 54x, and we, let's start by writing the x squared term, it's the highest power, so we write that first, negative 5x plus 54x, that's 49x. Alright, so we have negative 2y. It's not affected by the bracket at all. 7x times 3y is 21xy. 7x times 5 is 35x. And all those terms are different. We have a y term, we have an xy term, we have an x term. They cannot be added or subtracted. They are all different terms. Not like at all. So this is our final answer. Here we have 9 tenth y times y, 4y squared. So 9 tenths times 4, 4 goes into, well, let's say 36 tenths, and that cancels to 18 over 5. 
y times y squared is y cubed. Again, 2 nines, 18 over 10, that's 9 over 5. It's a negative 9 over 5. y times y is y squared. 9 sixes, 54 over 10. That's positive. All right, so 2 into 54. 27 over 5, y. All right, so we just work the fractions. So 9 4 is 36 over 10. And that cancels 2 into 36, 18, 20, 10, 5. The y times the y squared would give y cubed. We have a negative here because positive times negative gives ne negative. 9 2 is 18 over 10. That cancels the 9 over 5. Y times y is y squared. 9 6 is 54 over 10. So we're reducing that by 2. 2 into 10, 5. 2 into 54, 27. And y times, there's no y here, so it's just y. And all those terms are different. We have a y cubed, y squared, y. We cannot add or subtract them. Here we have a negative 2 pq times p. So that's negative 2. The p times p will be p squared q. Negative 2 times negative 6 is a positive 12. p and q times q, that's q squared. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16, and we have the p q. And these are all different terms. P squared Q, P Q squared, P Q, they are all different terms. We cannot add or subtract them. They are different. This is P squared Q, this is P Q squared, this is P Q. There's nothing we can do in terms of addition and subtraction. So that's how we leave them. All right, so let's look at these now. We have three, six times three quarters. So. 6, 3 is 18 over 4, that's 9 over 2x. 6, 4 is 24. 19 and a half x plus x gives us back the 20 and a half x plus 30. All right, so 6, 3 is 18 over 4, that's 9 over 2. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. 6 times positive 5, positive 30. This x is not affected by the 6, it's outside, separate from the bracket, so we just put it back. And then we combine the x's. So 9 over 2, that's 4 and a half x. 4 and a half x minus 24 x is 9. Sorry, so that should be negative 19 and a half x. Negative 19 and a half x plus x. So this should be negative 18 and a half x. And then we write back the 30. Alright, 3x squared times 2, so 3, 2, 6. x squared times x is x cubed because we're adding the indices. 3 times negative 5, that's negative 15. x squared, negative times 2x, that's negative 2x. Negative times 9 is negative 9. And these are all different terms. We have an x cubed term, an x squared term, an x term, and a constant term. There's nothing we can do in terms of addition and subtraction. So this is as simple as it gets. All right, so the 8x is not affected by the brackets. It's separated by this minus sign. So we write about 8x. Negative times 4x, negative 4x. 
negative times negative 2y positive 2y plus 6y 8x minus 4x is 4x 6y plus 2y that's 8y and this is our final answer negative 5 times 2x negative 10x negative 5 times 3y negative 15y negative 5 times negative 4 positive 20 and the minus 16 is not affected by what's going on here it's separated now the only two terms we can combine here are the 20 minus 16. The negative 10 is an x term, this is a y term, so we write those back. Nothing we can do to combine those, but 20 minus 16 is positive 4. And finally, negative 3 times x, negative 3x, negative 3 times y, negative 3y, negative 4 times x, negative 4x, Negative 4 times negative 4, positive 16. We can group the x's, negative 3x minus 4x, negative 7x, negative 3y plus 16y, that will be a positive 13y. And that is our final answer. We can combine the x's and the y terms, are two different terms. Alright, so that's it for the distributive law, right? Whatever is immediately in front of the bracket, immediately in front, not, not you can't just say what's in front because this is in front, but it's not immediately in front. The negative 5x is not affected by the bracket. The negative 2y is not affected by the bracket. Likewise, at the end, this is not affected by what's going on here. So you have to watch out for those. So after you expand or foil, multiply this term by each term inside the bracket, then you look to see if, you're, if you ended up with any similar terms, any like terms that you could further combine, and you simplify. So that's what we mean by expand and simplify. Expand using the distributive law, and then look to see if you have like terms that can combine. That's the simplification part, simplifying. All right, so if you have been helped by this video, just drop a line to say thank you. And let me know if you want me to do any videos on a particular topic. I'll gladly do that for you. Please share the video so other students can benefit from the information. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe now. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.